Hey beautiful family, Losing Drea here, and I know it's been a really long time since I've done a video. I so I think the last video that I did for you guys that I uploaded to my channel was for the banana meringue pie recipe, and I hope you guys liked that. However, I haven't been able to do any other videos because though I've tried, I have not been in a position to where I could. So let me try to do this as quickly as possible so I don't have to sit and edit because I'm having a really hard time sitting at all. I'm very uncomfortable right now um, in my own body. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of stuff I want to say has happened since the last video. Uh, but mostly the bottom line, as you can probably tell from the title, is I was hospitalized and I had my gallbladder removed. They did it laparoscopic and um, it was a terrible time in the hospital and I fear hospitals besides the fact and doctors besides the fact. So having come out of the hospital um, with all that transpired and it's really been a hell of a ride, let me tell you guys. Anybody who ever tells you don't go to a certain hospital, especially when you're hearing it all the time over six years of your living in a place and you hear it from even other medical professionals at other medical hospitals, listen to them. I thought I would be different. I thought, you know, new ownership, things have changed. I'm not Miss Pris. I don't have a gold spoon coming out of my mouth. I'll be fine. I was in pain. I didn't know if I was coming or going. I didn't know what was coming out or going out or going in or whatever. So I told my husband to take me to the local hospital, and he did. And I didn't know what was to come. Turned out I had a 1.5 centimeter gallstone in the neck of my gallbladder. Now, they did an ultrasound and said that all my parts, even my gallbladder and everything was fine, but I had the stone in there and that they were going to propose to remove my gallbladder um, so that I didn't have any future attacks because it was likely that if I had that stone that I would likely get future stones and it could turn into pancreatitis or something like that and it, then it could get I can get septic and I could die and I don't want that it's even more painful and all this other stuff well I don't know that any of you guys but if you have a fear of anything and you're already dealing with that and then you hear something like that when you've never had surgery or anything in your whole entire life um, it's kind of scary you know and in actually uh, from today in four days I'll be 48 I know I some people don't like to age themselves. I think I've been aging gracefully, but I'm proud to say that at almost 48, I almost was able to keep all my parts and never had any major surgeries or anything other than a little uh, kind of like a skin thing that I had removed on my belly where they left me a couple stitches. So I'm dealing with that while I go into this hospital and they tell me all this stuff and they run all these tests and they put me through hell. They put me into even more pain because I apparently am allergic to straight morphine. Not the synthetic form called the Lada, but definitely straight morphine. And um, they gave me two choices uh, or options, whatever you want to call them. They said, look, we can keep you in here overnight and let you... Uh, go to surgery first thing in the morning, have the gallbladder removed, and be done with it. Or you, we can send you home with some pain meds, hope you don't get another attack, because chances are the pain meds we're going to send you home are not going to be strong enough to sustain your pain. You'd end up here anyways, you know, back here in the ER. And um, on Tuesday, you'll go see the surgeon in his office, and then first work a plan and schedule surgery for a later date. And I said, well, I'm already here. By all means, let's just get this over with because I'm already in pain and I don't want to take more time out from my life and whatever, obviously. You know, I didn't go into that with them, but lo and behold, to keep this as short as I can, I opted for the surgery. The night before surgery wasn't bad, but the day after surgery, coming out of surgery was horrible because they gave me morphine again after the situation that happened in the ER the day before. They should have known to put that on my thing and not to give it to me. They gave it to me. I was in excruciating pain. I wanted to be put back under uh, anesthesia. Coming out of anesthesia, somehow my husband got up into the recovery room where he wasn't supposed to be, and I only knew that because I overheard the nurse calling somewhere and complaining about how the hell did he get up here? He's not supposed to be here. And he had given me some bad news when I was like barely out of 
anesthesia, which it wasn't current bad news, but he thought it was, thanks to my mother. And so he was telling me about something that happened to my brother and sister-in-law and the kids, and they had a car accident. Well, that actually had happened Thursday, the, the week before, not that day on Monday where here I was in surgery. Something that could have waited, didn't have to tell me, especially at that moment. And yeah, how the hell did he get up there? You guys need to look at that. Don't blame him. You know what I mean? Because obviously y'all weren't watching the door or you didn't lock it or I don't know. I don't know. But in any case, that all happened. Um, and that day was just a roller coaster of hell for me. They did not keep up on my pain meds as scheduled. They were not keeping ahead of the pain and my pain was coming and it was bad. They did a laparoscopic procedure with four incisions where they make four tiny incisions and one over the belly button where they take the gallbladder, I guess, out from. And um, I was in just pain all over, inside, outside. I literally felt like somebody was inside me beating me up. Like pain, like really bad, not as serious as what sent me to the hospital, but still very bad. Like something was wrong. I didn't feel good. And I just wanted something to numb the pain. I don't want to feel that. And, um, I had a hard time getting my pain meds. I had a hard time getting any of the nursing staff, CNs or anybody to come to my room. Alarms would be going off for my heart monitor for my IV. Every time I had one, eye, um, the night before, I had an IV here in my right arm, so every time I creased my arm, I figured out that it was crimping the tube, and the IV monitor would go off, and I could hit the button and turn off the alarm, but of course, it would go off again. I knew to undo my arm, but then I couldn't use my arm. Um, now they had it here for where they did the surgery, so that wasn't the issue. It's just that the antibiotic they were giving me in the drip, it was out and the alarms going off and nobody's coming up to my room. They had me promise them that I wouldn't get up out of my bed and it was on my board that I was not to move without assistance. But they didn't leave me anything to go to the bathroom and they didn't leave me a, a bedpan or a, one of those urinal things like they give men, nothing. And if I got to pee, I got to pee. I'm not going to be mortified laying in my bed and peeing on myself. They're not coming and they're not coming and hours are going by and nobody's coming. The nursing station, because if, you know, they keep calling to me because the first time you hit the button, if they don't come in your room and um, cancel it from the panel behind your bed, it's going to keep going off or the light stays lit or whatever at the nursing station. So, you know, I don't even know if I could hit the button a second time or a third time. I don't know. I was very much in pain, very much confused. Couldn't reach the phone that was in my room. Um, there's no number for front desk or or hospitality or whatever you want to call it. I mean, the place is really like not run well at all. And um, a lot of bad stuff was going on with me as far as I'm not getting ahead of my pain and not keeping up with my pain uh, on schedule. And earlier in the day, that day, I met with a nurse supervisor named Joe who had come up to my room and promised me that they were going to get a little better. They were going to stay ahead of my pain. That they were going to, you know, stay on top of it, this, that, and the other thing. And he was really nice about it. Uh, he said he'd be there till 7. I think, I couldn't remember at the time, but I think he said he'd be there till 7 the next morning if I needed him. You know, was just, he was just a phone call away. Well, it had it on my board that at 8.05 I was supposed to get Dilaudid. And in between every six hours, I think they were giving me Toradol, which is like, uh, it's IV form of like Advil. And that's what helped me from the time I was in the ER when the morphine basically was not good for me because it created the stone or the area in which the stone was in to swell and it made the pain uh, more severe for me. So um, whatever they were giving me, it really wasn't any of my business at this point. I just wanted to not be in pain. And later in the evening, it's scheduled at 8.05. They do a shift change from 7 p.m., and nobody comes in my room. And about nine something at night, I finally am meeting the nurse. Uh, it's a it's a guy, and uh, he was my friend later. But at that particular point, I wasn't too happy with him because he comes in, takes about a half hour to get to know me, know what's going on. I'm trying to tell him about how you know they're not keeping up on my pain meds and everything, and how I'm having these problems. And then he tells me I'll be back, but I got to give somebody else their meds. It's like over an hour and a half, at least, if not longer, since mine were scheduled and I didn't get them. And he tells me that. 
My husband he went home to go to sleep because he had to work, but he woke up and he texted me, you know, good night, sweetheart. You know, is everything okay? And I said, I don't want to talk about it. And it was, I didn't want to let him know what was going on because I knew it would be 10 times worse for anybody if he got involved and called and started complaining. And then I'd really be embarrassed or something. So I pick up my phone because I can't reach the phone, the hospital phone that they give you at my room phone. And I pick up my cell phone and I'm trying to go through Google and find, you know, through the name of the hospital, a number to call because there's nothing on a board, nothing, no, nothing to tell me what to call or who to call. And I'm trying to call that nurse supervisor who came up earlier and I can't reach him. Well, when I finally reach him, I, I'm talking to him. He's outside my room at the nurse's station, which was only two other patient rooms down from my, from my, where my room door is. And, but I can hear him and he goes, I know I'm, I'm right outside your door. I'm right. I'm, you know, I'm right outside your door. I got your husband on the other line. I'll be there in a minute. That was at 11 23 PM. And I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. 11.47 p.m., be, besides my waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, and I can hear him, like, complaining or yelling. I don't know if he's yelling at the staff for the crap that they were putting me through, or was he just displaying his anger and upset at the fact that I'm complaining or my husband complained and got on his ass? I don't know. But 11.47, he walks in my room, and he's got this really nasty attitude, and I said, whoa, first of all, don't take that tone with me. And he starts going on and on, like talking over you, like some men like to talk over women or something. I don't know what his deal was. He wasn't as nice as he was earlier in the day at all when my husband was there. Like, my husband was there, he was nice. But when my husband out there, it's just me, he was being a real jackass. And he had that attitude. And I told him, don't have that attitude with me, please. You know, that's not cool. And then he started to go on and tell me what medicines I was on and how many doses of each. And he, he was going with, like, you know, to say... I'm trying to take more meds than I'm allowed to take. And I said, yo, first of all, I go, I don't need to know your job. I already know. I already heard. I already know what I'm taking, what I'm being given, and how much of each I'm being given. That's not my business. My business is I'm in pain. You're not giving me what's on schedule. They're not keeping up with the schedule. And you came up earlier, and you told me you were going to stay ahead of it, and they're not staying ahead of it. And I said, and I basically cussed him out and I threw him out of the room but I was so emotional after standing up for myself and being my own advocate and um, I was overcome with some major major emotion and I was hysterical and now the nurse the guy nurse is sitting there trying to calm me down and finally give me my pain meds and all this other stuff but you know that was what happened there, and it was just downhill from there. Well, because of the complaining, some lady came up the following day to do some sort of a survey and asked me what happened. She said that everything that I spoke, you know, discussed with her was confidential, but everybody knows what her job is in the hospital. So she's up in my room. They obviously know she was complaining. Everybody probably got reamed out. Nobody was happy that following day. My goal was to go home. They needed to transfer me over from IV meds to whatever pill they were going to prescribe for me to take at home. They had given me something in the morning for the pain in my IV, but a little later they gave me what they were going to send me home with in the pill to see you know, how I could tolerate it and if it would help. Well, I still must have been under the influence of the pill. I was nowhere near my next dose for the the next pill which would have been six something at night and she's asking me how I feel and I told her I feel okay which I did I wasn't gonna I wasn't lying about my pain because I wasn't trying to get pain meds and get high in there and the next thing I know she's got my release papers and like quick quicker than ever for my husband or my mother or anybody I've ever experienced so anyway so the nurse was coming to bring me a chair or somebody was coming up with a chair and I'm waiting and um, she came quick as well chair right there didn't want to wait for me to walk they were like there's a chair right here get in the chair and she's asking me questions and lecturing me the whole way down in the elevator asking me if I've ever been a bad kid did I give people a hard time in school all this stuff and like talking about like um, giving people hard times and everything the whole way down to where my husband was waiting for me in the car and <sighs> I don't get it. It's like everybody must have got together and knew that I was the patient that was complaining and giving everybody a hard time, but nobody took into consideration that I wasn't doing anything more than asking for what I had a right to, which is some 
pain management for my pain, which they promised me and they weren't giving me. Like they were just totally ignoring the fact that somebody wasn't doing their job on time. You know what I'm saying? And it was creating a problem for me. It was creating pain and it wasn't fair. Uh, so anyways, that all happened. I left and not but a little while ago because we dropped, um, we dropped the prescription off at Walgreens. My husband went in and dropped it off and came back out. But by the time I got home, I was in excruciating pain. We called the doctor, the surgeon who did my surgery. He wasn't there. The answering machine put us in touch with his partner, this other doctor. He called me in a prescription for Toradol, which is what I was given in the IV, but now I can take it in the pill form too. So I had two prescriptions, one for Narco, one for Toradol. They each said take one um, every six hours. So I decided, I took it upon myself to take one of each every three hours. So I was taking them as prescribed, but I would have a Narco and then a Toradol three hours later, then a Narco. So it was six hours later and then a Toradol. So that was six hours later. So I told this to the doctor, but I still told him of the pain. He said, well, you shouldn't be having pain, this, that, and the other thing. If you have to go back to the hospital, go back. And I said, there's no way I'm going back to that hospital after the way I was just treated there. And he said, they have nothing to do with it. I will go. I guess he told my husband at one point on the phone that he would go there himself and that he would take care of it. But, you know, once you're in there, you're in there, and there's nothing nobody can do about it unless you just say, I want to leave. And then they put you as AMA where you leave against medical advice. Um which I don't think I ever want to do because I don't think that looks good on me, for one. Like, how sick can you be if you leave against it medical advice? But trust me, if I knew what I knew before I went, I would have never even went. And I would have put up with whatever pain for 40 minutes to get to the other hospital, the good hospital. But uh, lo and behold, I did not go to the hospital. He told my husband I can't go to the other hospital that we mentioned that I wanted to go to which is called Gulf Coast, by the way. I wanted to go there. And he said, well, they didn't do your surgery there, so they're not going to do anything for you there. Lie. Big lie. My husband called there, told them that, and they said, no, if she comes in, we will see her. Half of the people that they see is the people that came out of the hospital that's here locally that did my surgery because they screw up. So, anyways... Um, I get really like emotional and upset and like very hyper like when I start explaining how pissed off I was and it's not good for my health. They tell me not to move around and do this and that but moving around actually feels better for me. I have a pain. It's, it's not really where the gallbladder is. It's actually in the back where the gallbladder was like directly in my back and it won't go away and it's this nagging pain and it's just really really bad. I'm on something for pain right now but as soon as it starts to wear off that it's like a spasm and it's just a constant spasm that doesn't go away it's very uncomfortable more worse at night when I'm trying to relax lay down or go to sleep than during the day if I move around do some cleaning and whatnot around the house and walk around and whatnot it's okay um, it's not, I don't feel that it's gas because, not to give TMI, but all that is working as it should. They didn't make sure in the hospital whether or not I was going to the bathroom, you know, one and two. Uh, I did one, but never two until after I came home and it was a couple of days later. And of course, you want to monitor that because on pain meds that they give you, people have a tendency of getting constipated and, you know, so they want you to take something for that. I could have sworn the doctor told me to take my Lanta, which that's like an antacid, and that's stupid. What he really meant was like Marilax or something to help you go to the bathroom, you know, like a gentle overnight stool softener or whatever. But I'm okay now. I'm not like 100%. I still have this pain that I'm dealing with. It's more annoying and frustrating than it is... Um, like stabbing pain it's 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 not exactly stabbing pain every now and again i get a pain and it, it, it's pressure which i feel it more in, in my whole entire chest and not just in my back that i do contribute to the possibility of being some gas trapped within me um but i almost feel like they've left the stone in they took the gallbladder out but they left the stone in because there's three clamps they put 
you know, I, I watched the surgery on a YouTube video. Thank God, YouTube, right? Or Google. And they put three clamps and then they cut in between. Well, if that stone was in the neck and they that's where they cut, I don't know. I mean, for me, I just feel like there's something left in there. Or maybe my body's rejecting the clamps. Or I don't know. So I'm fighting the need to go to the hospital because my husband's been using my car. His truck has been... Uh, at a commission for a while and I don't want to get stuck at the hospital and I, I'm always thinking about everybody else and I don't want to put anybody else out and I don't want to inconvenience anybody else. So night before last, my mom ends up at Gulf Coast, the good hospital, because I drove her there myself. I said, there is no way I'm going to call 911. They're going to want to bring you to this hospital here locally, and I'm not going to let it happen. There's no way. So as long as she could muster whatever pain she was in, I drove her, and I got there pretty quickly, and I took her to the good hospital, and I stayed there with her. And I think for those who have me on Facebook, you might have seen me post, whoever has the damn voodoo dolls of my mom and I, please stop poking them because I'm in pain, she's in pain, the two of us are going through this crap all at the same time, it's just not cool, but... Anyways, I'm going to cut this now because I don't want to go on forever. I love you guys so very much. If you haven't already subscribed, please click the subscribe button down below. Ring the bell that's on next to it and be sure to be notified of all new videos as I put them out. I'm sorry. Hopefully the next one won't be so long from the last, meaning this one. And I want to thank all my new subscribers. Uh, if I haven't already checked out your channels, if you have some, I will be doing that shortly. So... Please just give me a little time because it's very hard for me to sit and do things on my computer. So I have to try to do what I can on my phone. And apparently I'm very limited on my phone of what I can and can't do here on YouTube uh, compared to what I can do from my computer. So with that said, be happy, be healthy, be beautiful, but just be you. Be the boss of your loss if you're on a weight loss journey. And I will definitely be seeing you guys in my next video. Bye, guys. Be blessed.